Hi, it's Mr. Smith here. Sorry I can't be with you today, but I'm going to teach my lesson remotely, which means you can look at it, you can pause it, and you can still learn about computing. So today we're going to be doing about the ancient Greeks, so you can do some computing work and also show your knowledge of history, or you can learn more about history. So on this main screen, you can see I've got some different icons. We're going to use the second one from the left at the bottom, which is called Safari. You could also use Google Chrome, um, or you can use Firefox or Microsoft Edge, because we're just going to in, um, use the internet. We're going to browse the internet. So these are called internet browsers. So basically, um, I'm going to choose Safari. And then I'm going to search for my website, so Amazing ICT. And I've been doing this for 10 years, so it comes to the top, so you can see it's there. So you need to click on the main top site, and then you're going to choose the Scratch channel. So what you'll need to do um, you could try refreshing this to get an update, but you're probably going to have to go to view all, which is there. And there's loads of projects here. So there's 10181, so 1081 projects, but we're going to do about ancient Greece today. So click on that. Now notice that you don't need to be signed in. So we're just going to do it without being signed in. So this is called a template and I've created a template for you. Notice all the images are copyright free so that I'm not breaking any new rules about using other people's images without asking to use them or without them letting me use them. So we're going to click on the blue button top right and um, see inside. And you can see what we've got here. Just got to resize. Because you're on the internet, um, don't forget that you are, it can sort of freeze. So in this case, it's frozen. So I'm just going to try and resize. Just going to refresh. So notice I'm having problems resizing. I'm trying to pinch it, but it's not working. So I'm just going to refresh. So that's the top on the right on the black bar. And that should solve the problem. There we go. So it's quite useful, actually, when things don't go 100% right, because that's what happens in reality. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to see inside and then you can see that I've created a template with four characters on. Now these are called sprites. So you've got the cat, you've got Avery who's doing some walking, D who's doing some thinking and then a button. So this is for you to use. So the button um, perhaps is the most useful because when you click on the button it'll take you to different backgrounds. So you can choose a background that you want to explore. And that one just to sh just shows you the fact that when we're moving a character, it's based on coordinates. So um, D now is at coordinate 10, 14. And I can easily just edit that. So if I put in 0, 0, that will take D straight to the center of the screen. So that might be quite useful. And I can also change the size on here. So I've put them all as 40%. So um, now D is at the center of the screen. When I click the button, it does that, changes the background, as I've said. So what I want you to do now is to think about which background you want to use and just click on it. I am going to have to refresh this page again because it's gone big again. I'm going to go back and refresh it.
and back again, back again, back again, and that, that should work. So sometimes you need to be patient when you're using technology. Now, what you could do is you could join Scratch. So you could create your own username. Um, so say you're called, let's try that D1. So say you were called D, you could put capital D, E, E, and then you could put some numbers in. Don't forget you don't want to give all your full name away. So I would say I was called D Smith, I wouldn't want to call put it as D Smith. So I could put D2468 and see if that's available. That's been taken, so I might have to add a nine there. So that's available, and then you can choose a password. So don't share your password with the world, but you do need to perhaps make a note of that in case you forget it and just hide the username and password somewhere. So I'm not going to do that because I've already got a username. So I'm just going to go to see inside. The reason you might want to join Scratch is because then you can save it. So if something goes wrong, you can load it again. So let me choose my background. So let's try. Let's have. Yeah, we'll have that one. So I'm going to make Avery just walk across the screen. Now if I just click on there you can see it's 480 units altogether so I want her to walk about 50 units. So I'm going to put her where I want her. Perhaps at those steps there. And this is where I start to do my programming. So I might say when the sprite is clicked, she's going to move 10 and then change to the next costume. Now costumes are not what they're actually wearing, it's the way it looks. So Avery has got um, four costumes and that just represents her walking. So what we could do is we could say, right, when we click on it, she's going to move 10 and then she's going to change to the next costume and then perhaps wait. Now we won't want her to wait for a whole second, but we could say half a second, so 0 0.5. And then what we could do, we could be quite clever. We could do it two ways. We could right click on this, right click on that, and we could say duplicate, and then we could do it again. Now remember, you'd want to duplicate it four times because there's four different costumes, but I'm going to just get it to repeat four times. So if I make that full screen again, that's top right. When I click on Avery, she should slowly walk across. Click on her again, she'll slowly walk across. So that's what I want you to do. But before you do that, I just want to make sure that you understand all the technolog technological words. So this is called a list of instructions. And basically, I've planned what I want it to do. Some people think of that as an algorithm. An algorithm you can either write on paper or you can do on the computer usually write it on paper. So I tend to think of that as a list of instructions or a list of commands. And that is called a loop because it's happening more than once. And if I go wrong, so imagine I only make that two, then she's only going to move twice. So that's not very good because I know she's got four costumes. So then I would debug the code. And then what you can do is you can take a picture of this. You can send it to your teacher to show them what you've done. You could show them the code and you can have different coding from different characters. So if you look at the coding for my button, it's simply two lines or two blocks. And there's no coding for the cat and there's no coding for D either. So you can do coding for them. And you can even bring in some more characters that you might want to use. Remember that this is an ancient Greek 
um, story. So you might, you probably wouldn't want to have, you know, a dinosaur, or you certainly wouldn't want to have um, a flying dog. Okay, if you go wrong and put a flying dog on there, you can just press, click on it and press delete and it will go. And then you'd sign in with your username. Um, don't tell everybody your password, remember. 